This coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. It's a day of fasting and abstinence. Mass times are 8 a.m. and 12 to 5 p.m. here at St. Mary's and 6.30 p.m. at St. Benedict's. The next Spirituality and Grief session will take place tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m. on the link. There are Lenten light boxes at the entryways to church. These light boxes are for our understanding and our need for compassion for those people who struggle in third world countries. Many of these people do not have access to clean drinking water and several will have to walk several miles just for this, what we take for granted. We ask that you keep the box when you are at, and when you're done, as a reminder to, to pray for these people and put money in there each day. And at the end, we ask that you, instead of turning the box in full of change, just write a check for what's in there and return it in an envelope uh, marked for the uh, mic box. The other thing is, is that we also ask that you continue to pray throughout the year for people who have less than we do. It's an important thing in our spiritual life. Other information on upcoming events can be found in this week's bulletin or on the church's website. We ask you now to check your cell phone to make sure it is in silent mode. Now we invite you into a moment of silence as we prepare hearts and minds to enter this time of praise and worship. On this Sunday before Lent, the focus of our celebration shifts from what is expected of us as disciples to God's gracious and tender care for us. As we conclude this season of winter ordinary time, what better way to prepare for Lent than to reflect on how much our loving God wants us to be free of worry and cares and to trust in God's goodness and grace. Let us now turn to offer one another a sign of Today's readings are at number 1113 in the Gather Hymnal. Our next parts start at number 230. And our opening hymn is number 622, Canticle of the, of the Turning, number 622. <laughs>
with all of you. And with your spirit. Now, friends, let's take a moment to acknowledge our sins as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave us yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Hey, Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us all to everlasting life.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, thus should one regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Now it is, of course, required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. It does not concern me in the least that I be judged by you or by any human tribunal. I, don't even, I do not even pass judgment upon myself. I am not conscious of anything against me, but I do not thereby stand acquitted. One who judges me is the Lord. Therefore do not make any judgment before the appointed time until the Lord comes. For he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will manifest the motives of our heart. Then everyone will receive praise from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sufficient for a day is its own evil. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, 
when I first gave this homily last night, I was kind of worried because there was a doctor in attendance. And I see Dr. Jamie back there. So if I'm wrong, feel free to stand up and tell me. But I have a rhetorical question for you. What do you think is the cause, the root underlying cause of most of our health problems and other issues we see in society today? Somebody said it. Thank you. Stress? Absolutely. Good job. Extra blessing for you. For you. <laughs> Absolutely. It's stress. And I think as Americans in today's society, we've got a corner to market on stress and based on our lifestyles and everything that we're into and our kids and all their activities and the choices we've made and all the different things going on in our, our world today, we are a very stressed out people. But we can take comfort in one thing, we're, this is not a new problem because that's what Jesus was talking about today with his disciples. Stress. He looked at them and said, why are you worried? Why are you feeling stressed? And then he gave them a couple ideas to think about as to why they might be stressed. Let me take that first little section of the gospel today, where it says we can't serve two gods. It mentions God and mammon, and we translate that word mammon into money. And that's true. But it doesn't have to be just money that can consume us. It can be fame and power and riches and addictions and all these other things that crowd into our lives and make it very difficult for us to notice that God is there as well. Because for us to seek God, we need an emptiness. With all these other things going on, we don't see them. Now that can go on for a little while and not, probably, not cause too many problems, but our bodies are smarter than our brains are. Because when we get into a situation like that, where we're so divided as to where our loyalties and our priorities should be, our body starts to tell us things. We start to get sick. Are we just feeling off a little bit? Or we become angry? and all kinds of different things that can happen. And it's because we're trying to be pulled in so many directions, our body doesn't know what to do. And so it starts sending us signals to say, you better make a change. And then we go to that second part of the gospel this morning, where Jesus is saying, guys, you got nothing to worry about. Look at the birds. The birds don't work. They don't have to worry. Yet God feeds them. And look at the flowers. The flowers don't do anything other than grow. And that's at God's command. But look at how beautiful they are. So why are you stressed? Why are you worried? It's so easy for us to get wrapped up in our lives. In all the things that we're required to do that we lose track of those simple facts that God is there and will take care of us. Do we have to do our part? Absolutely. We can't just dump it all on God and say, you do it. It's not the way it works. But God will help us. I remember quite a few years ago, my wife and I had been married not too long. And like many young couples, we were struggling financially. Trying to figure out which bill will we pay this month. And I was on my way to work. And I was really upset. I was angry. I didn't know what to do. And I got to a point where I was so frustrated, I didn't dare drive any further. So I pulled off to the side of the road. And I yelled at God for about 10 minutes. And you know what? It's okay to yell at God. Because God wants to hear from us. Even if we're angry, God wants to know that we still trust Him enough to at least talk to Him. And so I sat there on the side of the road yelling at God, and I can't imagine what people driving by must have thought. 
There's this insane guy screaming at the top of his nose, alone in the car. But I, I unloaded on God. And I said, you know what? I can't deal with this anymore. I can't do this. And I, I kind of gave a little twist to God, which may not have been the best way to go about it, but I said, you know what, Lord, you put me in this situation. So I'm going to expect you to get me out of it. And after I did that, I felt somewhat better, somewhat relieved, and I drove on to work. So guess what happened? Not much. <laughs> the finances were the finances. They didn't change immediately. But what changed was me. Once I offloaded that to God and said, you've got to do this because I can't, my stress level went from here to here. And I was able to deal with that situation in a more positive manner. Because I'll be honest, I was angry. I was grumpy. I was not pleasant to be around, I'm sure. But because I learned to trust at that moment, I became better. And over time, the finances did kind of sort themselves out. And we were able to move on. But what we need to do, and hopefully we don't have to get all the way down to the bottom, rock bottom to get to this point. What we need to do, though, is to say to God, I can't do it on my own. I need your help. And that's what Jesus was telling his disciples. You don't have to do it alone. God is here. I think um, it's kind of a one-hit wonder. There was a musician, Bobby McFerrin, back in 1988. Well, I think kind of pretty right is one big hit song. Don't worry. Be happy. Because that's what God wants for us. And that's what Jesus is telling us through this gospel. You don't need to worry. Because the Father's going to take care of you. Are you going to have work to do? Yeah. Is it easy being a Christian? No. But God is there. And so what we need to remember out of all this is that we do have a God who loves us infinitely, unconditionally, totally, and will do whatever it takes to make sure that at the end we're with him in heaven. Don't worry. Be happy. Remain seated for a brief moment for a special presentation. I invite the following children and their parents or guardians to come forward. Bryce, Paco Camp, Benjamin Henry, Mo, and Abby. Guardians, some years ago you brought your children to be baptized, and on that day you accepted the responsibility of teaching your children about God's love. You've tried to help them to keep God's commandments by loving God and their neighbors. Are you still willing to accept this responsibility, and are you willing to carry it out? Yeah. On the day of your children's baptism, they were signed on the forehead the sign of the cross. I invite you once again to trace the cross on your child's forehead. And as you do, let us say together the words of the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Parents and children, are you ready to prepare together for the sacrament of Eucharist? 
parents, the children, and the whole community, are you looking to live and love as Jesus did? We are. Members of the Schuyler Catholic community, are you willing to support these families in faith, prayer, and example as they prepare to celebrate the sacrament of Eucharist? Yes. Yes. Now let us show our support with a round of applause. Life with you in heaven, 
We ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Our hand for the presentation of the gifts is number 679, Center of My Life, number 679.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the of the Holy Church. O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons, you form man in your own image, and set humanity over the whole world in all of its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis R. Pope, and Salvatore R. Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have some here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as they're passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, in whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by the same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a word of gratitude to thank all of you who have returned the surveys that were mailed out a couple weeks ago. So far we've looked at and tabulated over 80 of them, which is wonderful. Really appreciate your comments, your insights. Uh, if you have yet to turn in your survey as a registered parishioner, uh, we're hoping to have all of them in and tabulated by March 17th. So if you've yet to have a chance to pull it out, please return it as soon as possible. And then finally, you may notice it's getting very cold outside, but it's going to be a hot time tonight in the parish center as we'll have our Sunday night sock hop from 5 to 8 p.m. This is a fundraising event, very important, and it's a good way for fellowship to enjoy as well. Yours truly, Father Wolfman Jack, will be playing all the rock and oldies from the 50s and 60s. We'll have dancing, and if you're not into dancing, we're serving dinner. We're going to have games, hula hooping, bubble gum blowing contests, old TV shows and commercials, trivia, so much more. Come in a costume if you want, and I'm coming in a costume, so check that out. So we hope you come. It's fun for all ages, and it should be a rocking good time tonight. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks. Thank you. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you. The recessional hymn is number 609, You Are the Voice, number 609. <laughs>